Their participants will be delaying the session going on. The sessions are uh, more interactive sessions, so more question is going on, so that session will be a little bit delayed. Now we'll start our afternoon session. We have a speaker with Dr. Sarvani Asish. He's completed her PhD in from Triple A CCP. Her area of interest is uh, Network Pune. She's right now is working in a emotional and remote sensory working. He's <laughs> welcome now. Thank you for accepting our invitation. No session is in this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, very happy to be part of this Vardla session. And uh, starting with the session, as I don't have this camera access, so I'm moving to some other location. So my voice is audible now, sir. Yes, ma'am. Are the slides visible, sir? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Are the slides visible, sir? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So, I am going to deliver the lecture on this uh, research area, neural network compression by pruning technique. And starting with the need for compression, this is the overview of the presentation. And start here, starting with the need for the compression, I am going to discuss various techniques for neural network compression, especially the pruning technique. And then, we will look at the metrics, what are the metrics for the compression, and we will go through the small code where we can learn how to prune the filters from the convolutional layers. First, why do we need compression? You are all well aware that many image and video compression techniques where by compromising on the visual clarity, we get a storage efficient compressed images or video. As you can see how efficient these images are after compressing. Right from 86 KB, it has gone to 41 KB almost more than, it is reduced more than half of the size. <laughs> and even in the next image also. So along with the storage efficiency, we have many advantages of this compression. Like as mentioned here, transmission efficiency, faster loading times, cost savings, and improved performance of the overall system. In a similar way, can we compress deep neural networks without affecting the performance much? The answer is yes, we can compress. It is in fact a popular research direction and more than 1000 papers have been published every year from 2020 to 2022 in the area of new neural networks compression. There are mainly two motivation ideas for the compression of the neural network. First is the synaptic pruning which happens in our human brain, which means the removal of neurons from our brain that are not utilized much. As you see in the diagram here, initially at the time of birth, human has comparatively less synapses and they start growing until certain age is reached. And after in this diagram, you can see that after six years, brain starts undergoing this synaptic pruning. And here, this number of synapses, slowly the synapses are pruned and reaches an optimal number here. The synapses are removed as they are not much useful here. As you might have learned that these neural networks are inspired from our brain, the same pruning technique can also be applied to neural network scenario. That is, removal of certain portions from neural network and still maintain the performance. The works Optimal Brain Damage and Optimal Brain Surgeon in 1990 and 1992 were the initial works in this direction. Optimal Brain Damage measured the impact of each weight on the network error and pruned less important connections. And the next work Optimal Brain Surgeon has taken the concept further 
by considering second order derivatives of the error with respect to the weights. And in 2015 and 16, two more popular works have been introduced by Han et al. and Lee et al. The learning both weights and connections for efficient neural networks and pruning filters for efficient convenates. And these formed basis for many of the compression works. You might be aware of this work, pruning filters for efficient coordinates, where simple L1 norm of the filter weights is used for filter pruning. And the next motivation is to deploy larger models on the edge constraint devices. You can observe that the number of layers in the state of art architecture for this is ILS VRC challenge has drastically increased from 8 layers 19, 22, 152 and it, it is it was more than 200 layers in 2016. ILS VRC is ImageNet large scale visual recognition challenge as you might be knowing which throws challenge in various tasks such as classification segmentation over a thousand class data set with 1.4 million images. Initially, it was observed that the increasing of number of layers led to increase in performance. As you can see, initially they have increased the number of layers and observed the error rate is decreasing. And as, as it continued for few years, though the less error rate is observed, these deep models could not be deployed on edge constraint devices such as mobiles, cameras, drones, autonomous vehicles, etc. Then researchers focused on compressing these architectures without losing their performance much. He, in this example, this is an example after these are the motivations. Synaptic pruning is a motivation and the next motivation is successfully deploying of the models on the edge constraint devices. And this is the example of showing the effect of compression of the neural networks. You can see this is one of the work called MINT. Here they have performed the weight pruning. You can see the how in terms of memory the size of the model has reduced. You can see mainly in VGG16 you can see the baseline original model is 53.904 MB which has, which has been reduced to just 9 MB after compression. And also, you can see the ResNet 50 model over ImageNet dataset. It has been reduced from 91 MB to 46 MB. And this compression is huge. And this lead, and you can deploy these compressed models effectively rather than these uncompressed original models. Coming to the advantages of neural network compression, similar to the image or video compression, neural networks have also the similar advantages and mainly the storage efficiency, transmission efficiency, fast loading times and cost savings. And when it comes to the performance, the performance increase, the improved performance is not observed at all the times. Only just a small compromise in the performance is observed while compressing a model and in few cases you can and in few cases it is proven that pruning any architecture by little amount leads to increase in the performance not to a higher extent you can take any architecture for the any task and if you prune it to a certain extent obviously the performance will be boosted compression the models that were trained using heavy GPUs for many days can be easily now be deployed on the edge devices. Coming to the techniques for compressing the neural networks, these are the techniques, main techniques for compressing neural networks. First is the pruning, where certain connections and weights are removed based on certain criteria. And quantization involves reducing the precision of the weights in the neural networks. You know like in the neural networks mainly it consists of weights and you need uh, representation you represent them using some number of bits and using the quantization the it means that uh, the the similar the same weights are represented with the fewer bits which reduces the memory footprint 
and knowledge distillation is a technique the third knowledge distillation is a technique where smaller model is trained to replicate the behavior of a larger model and which is a more complex than the student model the main objective here for the smaller model is to capture the knowledge and the generalization whatever the larger model is having and the low rank factorization this reduces the parameters in this neural network by approximating the weight matrices with the lower rank matrices in the rl based techniques are the ones which use the reinforcement learning and all these techniques aim at making making neural networks more efficient either by reducing the size computational requirements or both making them more suitable for the deployment on resource constrained devices however among all the techniques pruning is widely expo explored and utilized in academia and industry as shown in the figure the number of research papers on pruning have been markedly increasing you can see from 1989 to 2022 mainly from 2015 you can see an increment in the paper pruning papers it represents and also it represents more than half of the papers are on the neural network pruning among the compression techniques neural network pruning has more than half of the weightage now let us look at the pruning technique so what is pruning pruning means like we have seen like synaptic pruning in a brain we remove certain portions from the neural network architecture this is basically applied for convolutional and fully connected layers and there are numerous categorizations of these pruning techniques in this figure as you see here in some portions you can observe in that in this layer only the connections are removed whereas in some layers entire neuron as you are well aware like this neuron along with the connections complete connections is removed here so in this is one of the categorize category of pruning here and in the like this there are many varieties so the top the top way of pruning that means only removing of certain weights this is called unstructured pruning and if you remove entire neuron as such along with the connections this is called as a structured pruning and this is like a fully mainly multilayer perceptron and coming to the fully connected uh, convolution sorry full convolutional layers all of you are well aware of the convolutional operation in convolution there is an input here and there are filters consider there is filter 1 and filter 2 usually the size is 3 cross 3 5 cross 5 or 7 cross 7 each filter is a 3d three dimensional and which has again this 2d arrays if you see there are 2d arrays these are called kernels each filter has kernels in it is made up of the kernels so the depth of this entire filter you can see height and width is 3 cross 3 and the depth will be equal to the depth of the input image here each filter has the depth is equals to depth of the input image and each filter will now you know this uh, how the convolution operation performs now it will slide on the input and it it generates a 2d output for every filter there is a activation map the output is called as an activation map an activation map is generated now activation maps are stacked from from all the filters to get the output from the entire convolutional layer now there can be multiple filters say there can be some 20 filters and few architectures there are even 1000 filters so stacking all the outputs from all the filters you get a final output from the convolution layer and what do you actually prune or remove from the architecture as i as we have seen in first in the diagram of pruning like there are structured and unstructured pruning where only weights are removed and entire neuron is removed in convolutional layers you can see the leftmost weight pruning is unstructured pruning and all the three other kinds of pruning is called as structured pruning from the image you can observe that in the weight pruning the whatever weights you have pruned are very random here there is no order followed just 
you randomly pick up we randomly see whatever weight is least important and we make it to and we make it as a zero from the architecture whereas it is not like we are removing uh, randomly from all the places we can see in group pruning in strips you can see like in terms in rows the filters are being pruned in the kernel pruning as we have seen here each filter consists of the kernels in kernel pruning we zero out the kernels here and in filter pruning what do we do this is an architecture here so from this we remove this entire filter here like filter one suppose in this diagram you can imagine this each column as a filter one first column is a filter one and the second column is filter two and if you see in the filter pruning here what happens is you can see this is retained and the last one is completely pruned filter two is pruned now what happens to the output here so only one filter is operating on this particular input and there will be only one activation map so the depth of the output will also be decreased here and filter pruning is the most efficient among all the techniques as you can see the final output which we are getting from a convolutional layer is getting decreased now if we just remove the neurons or the filters and you try to run the inference you don't get the proper result or the result whatever your baseline model is having the model you uh, one of these three process have to be followed in order to regain the performance by pruned model these are all the these are three different techniques for regaining of the performance first is after pruning first we before pruning we train the model until the baseline accuracy is achieved initially we train the model after that we perform the pruning as we have seen it can be any kind of pruning as you observe we we perform the pruning and then we do the fine tuning of the model and this is where the model will regain its performance here and in case of iterative pruning what do we do is training followed by pr pruning and fine tuning again the model whatever we are getting after fine tuning we are again pruning it and fine tuning it so this is done in an iterative manner it is proven that compared to this one shot pruning this iterative pruning results in a much compressed model and and also in iterative pruning we remove the neurons or the filters or the kernels whatever pruning it is we perform remove less number of at less number of less in less quantities compared to one shot pruning in one shot pruning in order to achieve much compression we remove all of them at once and fine tune at once so compared to one shot pruning following an iterative pruning is more suggestible and automated gradual pruning here what happens is there is no separate kind of a pruning your there is no separate criteria you take up and you select the neurons for neurons or filters or kernels for pruning during the training itself what whatever the kernels or the kernels filters or weights whatever thing they will be pushed towards zero or with the of minimum minimum importance during the training itself they are separated out so that in pruning you can easily identify what are the ones which are having less importance and we prune them and even this can be performed in a iterative manner and there is a recent this regaining of the performance coming to the matrix now we have pruned the model and fine tune the model and now how can we 
evaluate our model how much it has been compressed and compare it with the other models the main metrics used for the evaluation of this compression models are the flops and parameters floating point operations and the parameters floating point operations include like addition subtraction division and multiplication whenever you are performing the convolution operation this filter you take the filter and you move it you slide it on the input and you calculate the activation map during this process there are multiplications additions and many other operations here so all this will come under floating point operations the complexity of the model is mainly determined by this flops and to determine the flops of a model whatever neural architecture there are many built in libraries and one one of them is a top dot profile which directly gives you the total number of flops for your model and if there and the, if you want to calculate them manually and we usually consider only convolutional layers and fully connected layers for calculation and then we show only the compression in terms of convolutional layers and fully connected layers and this is the formula and you can see for combining the flops of all the convolutional layers and fully connected layers we get the total number of flops here coming to the parameters you are well aware of the parameters like mainly the training time for any architecture depends upon the number of parameters it has so like what are these parameters the you are you are all aware that these are the ones which are mainly updated during the back propagation of the model here and for calculating the parameters this is a formula so what are what what exactly from the in from this diagram what are the parameters is the entries which are present in filter 1 and filter 2 these are the these are the parameters here and along with this there is a bias for every kernel if you observe here the, for every filter sorry the, for every filter there will be a bias value which you add to all the values all the entries in a filter here so this is the formula for parameters in a convolutional layer and this is the formula for a parameters in a fully connected layer and the total parameters are calculated by combining the parameters from the fully connected and convolutional layers for example here if we take this is the architecture this i have taken from the code which uh, which i am going to show now and you can see the architecture has two convolutional layers and three fully connected layers from this representation it means that the filter size is 5 cross 5 here filter size is 5 cross 5 and the input channels are 17 that means the depth is 17 so the filter size if we from this the filter size is 5 cross 5 cross 17 and there are 44 such filters in this convolutional layer so total number of parameters according to the formula would be this one next we will go through some some of the widely utilized pruning techniques we have these are the various techniques widely used techniques and very just going through these papers you can easily understand how they have performed based on which criteria they have selected the unimportant filters and pruned the filters first one is the l1 norm as we have seen in initially the absolute sum of the values of the filter suppose i take a filter here the absolute sum of all the values is considered as its l1 norm and whatever filters are having lesser l1 norm are pruned this is the logic of this L1 norm paper and then there is a paper by who at all it is based on average percentage of zeros if you can see these are the activation maps suppose a filter is generating activation maps with most of them being zeros here so it is clear that it is not of much importance if it is containing more number of zeros it is obviously not having much importance or contribution towards the performance so 
for this they calculate for every batches there will be multiple batches you train your model in multiple batches and you get multiple activation maps so we take average of all these zeros for across all the batches and across all these activation maps and we decide whichever is having highest percentage of zeros will be pruned first and this is a HDL paper in this paper they have considered the relationship between this activation map and the output this is the, no, not the immediate output as shown in this figure the final out the final output of your model final label so what happens here is in this work only the filters that are retrieving the information which is related to the class label suppose the activation map is containing information relevant to the class label it will have a high relevance value a metric called relevance is used in this it has it is said to have high relevance and whatever filters are able to retrieve the information not uh, any kind of information only the information related to your ground truth are retained and the ones which are not retaining much of the useful information related to the ground truths are deleted or pruned and in the rank in h rank paper this is also one of the uh, paper which has been which can be easily implemented code is also available and you can easily understand the inclusion and here there are multiple activation maps they have calculated the rank of the activation maps and the ones which are having lower ranks are pruned first and most of these papers all of these papers follow a iterative pruning strategy and this is another is history based filter pruning in this work suppose these are the filters during the training process if we observe the absolute sum of l1 norm of this filter this keeps on changing throughout the training this is because your weights are updating for every epoch or for every batch batch of training batch so as you as, as it keeps on updating this work observes what what are the filters that are having the similar trend of this l1 norm that are that means which are very correlated they identify such filters and they retain only one filter among them and next is one more important work this is fpgm the where geometric median is used here they calculate from the group of filters they calculate a geometric median and they read they the complete set of the filters which are near to a particular geometric median they replace all the filters by the median of the filters so uh, so the entire set of filters which are having which are very near to a particular they calculate the geometric median and if multiple filters are having their geometric median near to that value they are completely replaced removed and replaced by the median of the filters these are one of these are few of the important and easily understandable and the ones which for the, for which the code is available and you can easily go through and implement and these are the sample results from few of the papers this is one of our research work you can observe that these are multiple works this is from the paper hrl paper and you can see this l1 norm paper the h rank paper here the results how much they are able to compress and all the works as i have mentioned all the pruning works they are compared in terms of flops or parameters reduction so to how much extent the flops are pruned the flops percentage or parameter percentage to how much extent an algorithm is able to prune and how much per how much this performance the algorithm is able to retain based on this the efficiency of the algorithm is finalized as you can see here the hrl works you can see from the vgg architecture on the cipher 10 data set 94 94.98% that means around 95% of the parameters are pruned away that means only with the 5% of the parameters from the original network 
you can see we have almost similar performance to the baseline model just with the 5% of the original parameters we are able to have this performance even in terms of flops also you can see 84.85 around 85% of the flops are removed floating point operations 85% are removed and still you can see the accuracy here still it is 93.4 so this is the this is how you can get a compressed models using this compression techniques and which are useful for deploying on the edge constraint devices and you can also see results from one more work where you where you observe after pruning of the 62% flops and 62% parameters an improvement over the baseline accuracy is observed so the baseline model which is having comparative more than half like it is almost double the size of a compressed model and you can see the accuracy is still lower than this compressed model after pruning this 62% of the flops and parameters we have seen an improvement over the baseline accuracy here and these are the codes for understanding the pruning and this is first link is the official uh, pruning from official pruning uh, tutorial from the pytorch in this work they have explained clearly like what is a weight pruning you can also view the weights you can see the l1 norm of the weights or biases to see what are the weights or biases that have been pruned but here they are not completely removing this weights or biases by weights or the filters they are just zeroing them out and in this collab i have pulled out some code from my github and then this is a smaller version of that and in this work we you can go through you can go through the code and we can once run the code and see if you are able to open i'll share it in the chat box if you are able to open this just please open and start running that please let me know if you are able to open that collab you can see in this code first we are going for creation of the model this is a very simple and the basic mechanisms i have followed for pruning the layers or for deciding the importance of the filters and fine tuning for i have taken a simple architecture and a simple criteria for deciding the importance of filters so first initially this is the model creation this is the lenet architecture you might be aware of this lenet architecture we have utilized in this work so please run through this okay so now you can see first of all i have this nn module for de declaration of this is a pytorch code and in this i have declared the layers and then the forward function for the architecture here this is the architecture and then this is the main logic for pruning of the layers so what are the layers we are pruning here you can see here for the first if statement for the first first statement you can see for self dot named modules so you get basically in this you get the convolutional layer batch norm layer and fully connected layers in this code we are mainly pruning filters from the 
convolutional layers. When a convolutional layer, it is followed by a batch norm layer based on the indices which we are pruning in the convolutional layer. The same indices must be pruned away from the batch norm layer as well. In this code, we are not going to prune the fully connected layer, but as we have seen in the architecture, if you see from the architecture, whenever we are pruning this convolutional layer to the input to the fully connected layer is getting affected. So we are just modifying the input of the fully connected layers. We are not pruning the fully connected layers. In this code, we are pruning the only convolutional layers. If you see here, starting with the convolutional layers. So what are the things mainly you need to prune? If you see the architecture, mainly you, you do not modify the kernel size. Mainly, whenever we prune the filters, from the image if you see, whenever we prune the filters here, what is that thing modified is the depth mainly. So what the in channels and the out channels. The first one is in channels or the depth of the filter. Okay, you are having, let us go through the architecture. This is the, okay. Let us see the model, initial model, how it is. Okay, we haven't declared it yet, sorry. Okay. Let us go through this pruning code. You can see, now what has to be pruned for the first convolutional layer the in channels are not getting modified it is clear right for the first for the first layer suppose consider this as a first convolutional layer what will be the input the original image itself so the input depth is not getting modified so we are not going to change the depth of the first convolutional layer what we will change only the number of filters so if we are removing two filters what happens here in the code If you are removing two, if you are retaining, suppose if you are retaining 17 filters, it will be 17. If you are retaining only 10 filters, it becomes 10. As the input, we are using MNIST data set here. As it is having 1, as depth as we are declaring it as a 1, it is a just a 2D image. There are 2D images. As the in first layer is taking input from the image, it is not getting affected. Whereas, for the second layer, if you see, the in channels, what are the in channels? The number of in channels is equals to out channels from the previous layer. Okay. And this has to be taken care of. And then we decide and based on the L1 norm, we, are, we will prune the out channels. I hope this is clear. Like how we are pruning the conval first convolutional layer and the second convolutional layer. While pruning a convolutional layer, we have to take care of two things. First is the in channels. In channels, we should be, we should be careful. So what I am doing is, I am storing the indices. What should be retained for every layer. So in channels is dependent on the previous input, right? The in channels will depend on the previous input. Or if it is a convolutional layer, uh, like for a con2, if the output input is coming from the con1, it will be equal to the output of con2. So we need to modify this in channels and out channels for a convolutional layer. And here for a batch norm layer, in this architecture there is no weight batch norm, but this can be applied to any kind of architecture, whether it is VGG, ResNet or any kind of architecture. So you can observe, if there is a batch norm layer, we prune, we modify the weight and bias and also the variables, the values, mean, running mean and running variance here. And there is a single value called number of features, we modify this value also. And as I have, as I have explained you, the fully connected layer, we are not going to prune, but what happened is, the input we are getting from a convolutional layer. As we are pruning few filters from the convolutional layer, 
the output from the convolutional layer is getting affected. Output from the previous layer is taken by the fully connected layer. So, we are adjusting the in channels of the fully connected layer and this function it will select the bottom most indices like the what are the indices with the least L1 ohm value. Next. This is the architecture and we are using MIS data set here and in MIS data set if you see this is simply PyTorch code you can easily understand this and optimize schedule we are de declaring and we are not loading from a checkpoint and directly we want to run the code. See for example I have declared only 3 epochs here. Let us say 5 epochs and I am running this code. And if you see few of the hyperparameters, I am removing the filters using this particular variable prune limits. Here I am using these values 3 and 6 here. So from the first layer, I want to remove 3 filters and from the second layer, I want to remove the 6 filters. So the same thing, I want to pass it to the pruning, pruning function. Now after training, let the model, okay, the model got trained. And now let us check. Now you can see this is our model having 20 filters in the first layer and 50 filters in the second layer. Now what we want to do, we want to prune with the L1 norm. So for, the con for each convolutional layer, we are creating an array that holds the L1 norm of all the filters here. And we are passing this particular layer bounds is holding L1 norm of all the filters from convolutional layer 1 and L1 norm of all the filters from convolution layer 2. We are passing this function to get indices bottom k. And then for every layer, we will get only those indices after removing the unimportant indices. That is after removing 3 least important indices from convolutional layer 1 and 6 least important indices from convolutional layer 2 we will get the retain, ret what are the indices to be retained into this temp. Okay. Now the model is pruned. We can see the model. The pruning code. Here the prune filters. We are calling the prune filters for the model using this indices. So we are instructing that from the model. For this model, you retain only the indices present in this decrease indices variable. So now if you see, sorry, there is something, okay, we haven't run this, okay, now we have run this prune filters code and now if you check, 3 filters, previously it was 20 and 50, now it has become 17 and 44. Now what you have to do, you have, first we have trained the baseline model for few epochs. Then we have pruned the model and then what we are doing, we, are, we want to fine tune. Fine tune is nothing but just again we are training the model, that's it. See, isn't it surprising that the base, firstly, how, what is the top accuracy we have got? You can see 98.01 was the top accuracy here. What happened? We have removed pruned few filters 
and if we are running it you can see the accuracy is the highest accuracy is 98.71 the compressed model has showed higher accuracy than your baseline model okay so this is a very basic code and you can explore through this and what we have considered is a very small architecture and we have we ran for very less number of epochs and we have also removed very less number of filters please try to just explore this by using other criteria and more number of fine epochs for fine tuning and more number of filters pruning please so this is the code and this thing if you are having any doubts please ask me Oh, sorry, sir. I I did not see the message here. Yeah, exactly. You have only one screen to share. That's why you are unable to be understood. Uh, dear participants, if you have any doubts, ma'am, you hope we, you never mind. If you participant will ask you further inquiries, you can ask them. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm. Yes, sir. Please, I'm free to answer the queries. Sir. Dear participant, if you have, you can raise, or else you can drop a mail. Madam will respond to you later also. Okay. Hope there is no questions. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. In your busy schedule, you are spending time. Right. Hope we will get one more session in the future also. Right, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so thank much you. for this opportunity, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, yes, there is one query. Are uh, there Fisher information? Yes, they are using in some, there are some works. There are some works which are using this Fisher information also for pruning. Yes, there are some works. And yes, I'll share the PPT and as well as the code. I'll share it. Thank you. Okay, sir. Yeah, okay, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Once sir? again, thank you very much. Okay, sir. Thank yeah, you, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Please, uh, dear, dear, uh, dear participants, like, please feel, uh, please feel, uh, please feel free to ask the queries. And uh, uh, soon, shall, shall I provide my email ID, sir? Or yes, ma'am. You can please, please, you can provide. Is it shared, yes. sir? Uh, yeah. Is it provide? Uh, participants, you can note down a mail for uh, mail ID. You can drop her, or else you can uh, uh, send a mail to us. We will re read it to Madam also, so that Madam will reach you in her free time. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Rajpal.